Hey guys, just a real quick volume warning at the beginning of this video. Some of the threads get kind of loud when I'm reading them out and really getting into characters. So yeah, just a volume warning. If you are a headphone user, beware. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks so much, guys. Don't for bro. In this thread, I'll be sharing some interesting stories of my time as a 911 operator and dispatcher. It's 4.30 p.m. 911, what's the... Uh, met with the thickest southern accent I've ever had the displeasure of hearing. Yeah, hello, I'd like to report a trespassing. He sounded pissed as fuck. Send out units to the location. Sir, does the trespasser seem like a threat? He's on my property, so he's obviously a fucking threat. Is he being aggressive? Holding a weapon of some sort? He is not, but he ain't fucking listening to me telling him to get the fuck out. He's not responding at all? Oh, the fucker has his back turned to me. Units are on their way to- Well, they better be, because I'm about to blow this deaf fucker's brains out. Sir, if he's not a threat, you really should- It's my right! It's my property! I will fucking shoot this fucker if he don't fucking get out of my fucking property! Sir, I need you to calm down. A police officer is going to be there shortly. Well, surely ain't fucking good enough. I'm going to count till 20 for I shoot. At this point, I'm panicking. He's not even listening to me. He's just counting really loudly. Hear a gunshot. He closed the phone and he didn't answer my calls. The cops finally arrive. The idiot killed a lost Mexican 16-year-old with Down syndrome. He was also shit drunk. 4.30 a.m. Sounded like a kid in his mid-twenties. Man, help! His voice didn't sound convincing at all. I suspected it was a prank. M my finger is so cold, man! I was quiet, waiting for him to elaborate. I wasn't deserving of that luxury. Why is it cold, sir? Y you fucking tell me, dude! It's so fucking cold! Is it discolored? M man, it's fucking turning blue! Ambulance dispatched. I is it stuck in something? Is something restricting- Man, don't use big words like that, I'm dying! Ambulance arrive. There was a rubber band tightly wrapped around his finger. He was on LSD. 9 a.m. 911, what? Interrupted with humming. Sounded like an elderly woman. She doesn't answer me. I suddenly notice voices in the background. Really loud male shouting is suddenly in hearing range. She's still fucking humming a nursery rhyme. I began getting disturbed. I hear a woman scream in the distance. Cops sent. They arrive on the scene. It was a robbery. The woman was too terrified to talk to me. She was trying to comfort herself with the humming. 11 p.m. First thing I hear is hushed crying. Little girl. Officer dispatched. I ask what's going on. She says that there's someone in her house. Where are your parents? Out of town. You're alone? My brother is at his friend's house. She sounded like she was about seven years old. Are you sure it's not someone you know, like a relative? The man broke the door. Well, fuck. Did he see you? I don't know. I just ran upstairs. Where are you exactly? In mom's closet? Her crying gets louder when she mentioned her mom. I calm her down by asking about school. I realize she should be talking as little as possible. So I tell her to listen instead. And I go on and on, telling her about a Johnny Bravo episode I remember. She says the noises are getting closer. She's practically hyperventilating. Cops arrive. It was a robber. He was in the room right beside the one she was in. 2 p.m. Hoarse voice. Assumed she'd been crying for a while. 12-year-old girl. Dog was run over by a speeding car. He's bleeding from everywhere. She was full-on sobbing. I could hear the dog whimpering. We're not allowed to send an ambulance for a fucking dog. I felt so bad telling her there's nothing I could do but transfer her to a 24-hour vet. I could still hear her crying as she hung up. 7.30 a.m. Monday morning. Woman. Assumed she was 18 to 25 years old. Do you mind sending an ambulance to where I am, please? She sounded eerily calm, but her voice gave away that she had been crying. What's the emergency? I swallowed everything in the medicine cabinet. Everything. Ambulance fucking sent. Do you know the name of the pills you swallowed? Nope. <laughs> I'm just really, really, really tired of being alive. They keep fucking lying about it getting better, but it just fucking isn't, so... Here's the plan. If I survive this, 
I'm meant to be alive, and I'll try for a happy fucking ending. And if I don't, well, lucky fucking me. She ranted for five minutes before the ambulance finally arrived. 3.30 a.m. Woman sobbing. She didn't start talking until about one minute into the call. Unit sent. F four men. Oh god. Four men. She kept repeating it. She then sobbed something about being fucked against the wall. Then something about just trying to get to her friend's house. I asked where she was. She has no idea. Doesn't even remember the area she's in or her name. She's crying over being naked and cold. She's dizzy from her head being banged into the wall. The cops got to her and she hung up. 4 a.m. Old guy. Probably mid-40s. There's someone in my kitchen. He was practically whispering, but it was far too loud for a guy trying not to be heard. Unit sent. Is the person a threat, sir? <clears throat> How would I know, man? Have they seen you? Do they have a weapon? I think he has something metallic in his hand. Yeah, yeah, man. I think he saw me. Tell him to stay low while the cops are on their way. Oh, shit, man. I forgot to tell you. His name is Neville Longbottom. The name is familiar. I just can't pin down where from. Oh, fuck, man. Fuck, man. He just fucking winked at me. What the fuck, Neville? I'm quiet and very confused. This isn't just trespassing, man. This is sexual harassment, too. Fucking knock it off, Neville. Police arrive. He was conversing with a soup can. He was also high. A seven-year-old boy on the phone. My daddy isn't waking up. And here I was thinking today would be a good fucking day. I screamed at him to wake up. I even pulled his hair. Asked him to put his hand to his mouth to feel if any air is coming in or out. He says he feels nothing. Ambulance is on their way. At this point, he's talking like he's trying to hold back tears. I don't know if you guys know what that sounds like, but holy shit, it's familiar to me. I need you to tell me if he feels cold. He tells me he feels very cold. Please don't tell me daddy's dead. I don't know what to fucking say. No. No. Mommy died last year. They can't both be dead, right? I can literally hear this kid breaking down. The ambulance is on their way. They'll try to help. He's not dead. I'm quiet because I want to be fucking dead too. His lips are blue, see? He's just cold. That's why he doesn't want to wake up. He says all he needs to do is make him tea. I beg for him not to hang up on me. I hear him making tea. He pours the tea into his dad's open mouth. Ambulance arrive to a kid hectically trying to fight them away from his dad because... Dad is fine! Don't touch him! It's a Wednesday night. Sounds like a very scared black man on the other side of the phone. Hey, I just saw some dude fuck some kid up. Sir, did you mean you witnessed someone getting beat up? Did I fucking stutter? Alright, is the assaulter anywhere near you? Yeah, we just having a glass of fucking tea together, you fucking idiot. Of course he ain't anywhere near me. I ran miles away from that dude. Uh, can you identify the victim or the assaulter? Nah, I don't know him. Asked whether the assaulter was armed. Asked where exactly the victim was beat up. Sent an ambulance and two cops. Sir, are you sure you're in a safe location? I'm at some church. I got the Lord by my side. Did the assaulter see you witness the violence? What the fuck? Did you expect me to ask the motherfucker about the weather or some shit? I fucking ran! After confirming he was safe, the call ended and my sides were kill. Here's one that left me particularly nervous. Sounded like a teenage girl on the phone. 16 years old. She was practically whispering. I'm walking home from school and there's this guy. I think he's following me. Asked how close he was to her and where she was exactly. He was at the end of an alley, but he'd been trailing her ever since she left the school building. She said she couldn't identify him, but he was African American and wearing a black hoodie. Wow, that's original. She said she could make out something in his hand, possibly a knife. Asked about how far her house is, wasn't anywhere near her current location. Well, fuck. Ask if there's any crowded route she could head to. Nope. All the other ways are as empty as the one she's in now. She gasps and starts breathing faster suddenly. Uh, two guys just joined him. She starts walking faster. Don't run. It'll only make them run after you. 
Act like they're not there. You're fine since they're not that close to you. I knew very well she was fucked, and I also knew that these men could definitely outrun her. They're calling me over. I can hear them howling in the distance. She's crying. You have to keep calm. Are you near any houses? The only logical I could think of was having her enter a house or at least act like she's home so they'd leave. There's no houses near me. She says they're gaining on her, but they're still walking. Her breaths were uneven. I was fucking terrified for her. The cops were still three minutes away. I need you to act like you're talking to your dad. Talk to me and act like it. They were close enough at this point to hear her if she spoke loud enough. I guess I was hoping this would intimidate them. She started talking to me like I was her dad. Uh, hi dad. Yeah, dad, I'm at a... This location. You're picking me up, right? Oh, you're almost here? <laughs> Great. They slowed down their pace. Fuck yeah. Cops finally arrived. 7.30 a.m. Exhausted. First call of a long shift. The restricted voice on the other side of the phone definitely woke me up. Sounded like a teenage boy. 17 years old. His breathing was shallow. Like it hurt to take a breath. Apparently, while he was on his way to get some shit from the basement, he tripped, rolling down the stairs and onto his back, hitting his head hard in the process. He had his phone in his pocket. I asked when the injury happened. He said about 10 minutes ago, although I assumed his sense of timing wasn't very accurate due to his current condition. I thought I could walk it off. My mom would kill me if she knew I broke another bone, but it hurt too much and I can't move. He kept pausing between every word he said to take a breath. He was initially planning on just waiting there until his mother came home. His mom didn't have a phone. He was too scared to call because of the hospital bill. The middle of his back was hurting immensely. The back of his head was throbbing. He had a deep cut on his forehead thanks to the edge of the stairs. While on the phone with me, he kept trying to get up. I deeply suspected a neck injury, so I kept telling him to stop moving his head. He was seeing double. He was feeling nauseous. Heard him scream in pain while trying to turn to his side to throw up. Ambulance was going to take a while due to the location of his house. I tried to distract him. Asked him about school. Apparently, he was a soccer player. The pain got worse. He said his legs felt numb. Fuck, 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 fuck. Was on the phone while the ambulance arrived and took him away. I was later updated how he was diagnosed with a concussion and trauma to his spine that caused him to be paralyzed from the waist down. I found out his name was Matthew. Monday afternoon. 911, state your emergency. There's a fucking bee in my house! At first, I assumed he was drunk due to the slur in his words. I'm assuming you're allergic, sir? Y yeah, I'm alert. Oh my fucking god! Where are they coming from? There's so fucking many! There's like 50 of them, I, I swear to fucking god! Sir, are they near you? They're coming at me! D dude, I'm gonna jump in the pool! Don't do that. The bees will wait till you come up to breathe. Just protect your fa- Damn you, rainbow bees! What? Especially you, you fucking blue idiot! Sir, are the bees colored? Y yeah, li like a fucking rainbow! You know what? I'm gonna taste the fucking rainbow! Sir, don't eat the bee- Hear the distinct sound of grinding teeth. Officers arrive. The man was under the influence of a drug. I assume LSD. Monday night. Female. Sounds like she's in her early 20s. Walking home after work. I'm so sorry. This isn't an actual emergency. I'm just walking home from work and it's really dark. This is going to sound really stupid, but do you mind staying on the phone with me until I reach my house? She sounded terrified. I agree half-heartedly. We talked casually. Her name was Alexa. Took about 15 minutes for her to get home. Talked about her job. She thanked me for making her feel safe. Not a remarkable story, but for some reason it stuck with me for years. Answer a call to be met with hushed sobbing. Male teenager, 14 to 16 years old. <laughs> I just... He broke down, sobbing again. I just really feel like killing my sister right now. I, I could easily do it with this knife. Oh, all I need is one time. He cries some more. I, I, ju I just don't know what to do. What the doctor told me to do isn't working. It isn't fucking working. I hear something shatter. I assumed he threw glass at the wall. I asked what his name was. Daniel. He asks me mine. Tell him while in the process of sending units to his location. I tell him to take a few deep breaths. 
Ask what he had for dinner. Ask about what his favorite food is. All is well. His breathing is leveled and he's engaged in conversation. I ask about school. I fucked up. I should have known not to ask a kid like him about school. He starts shrieking incoherently. I tell him to put down the knife and his screams slowly decrease into a sobbing. An officer arrives. I wouldn't call someone suicidal a psychopath, but this person was extremely mentally disturbed. 911, state your emergency. Voice sounded like a young girl, maybe 15 years old. I just don't want to die alone. She was crying very heavily. I barely understood the words. Are you hurt? I swallowed a lot of pills. Deep downward cuts on both of my wrists. I guess I am. The shock subdued quickly. Are you nauseous? Yeah, but I'm not going to be throwing up. I want it to stay in my system. I need you to press a towel to your wound. Why would I do that? She asked. Her voice was so defeated for a 15-year-old. To stop the bleed. Why would I start it if I was planning on stopping it? Jesus fucking Christ. How long have you been bleeding? I don't know. Have you lost a lot of blood? Yeah. I took aspirin to make sure my blood is thinner. I even cut a very big vein, and I'm in a hot bath. She wasn't crying anymore, but she was mumbling her words. We try to avoid being therapists, but in times like these, we have to take out the things will get better card. She starts crying again, telling me she's already decided. She wants me to talk to her normally. I'm fucking panicking. She starts responding less. I had to come to terms with the fact that this girl will not listen to my attempt to keep her alive. Why the fuck is the ambulance taking this long? She asks me if I have a girlfriend and what she's like. I tell her about my girlfriend. Is she pretty? <laughs> Extremely. She giggles lightly and stops replying. She's unconscious now. Ambulance informs me she fell into a coma. I haven't followed up with her. Woman. Sounds like she's in her mid-twenties. She's gasping for air. Immediately sent on an ambulance to her location. I can't breathe. My chest hurts. I think I'm having a heart attack. I need you to sit down and take steady breaths. She's trying to steady it, but her breaths are coming a bit too shallow, which is probably why she then complained about dizziness. She was crying uncontrollably. I tried to soothe her, telling her she's fine and that the ambulance is close. She's more responsive suddenly. Her breathing's getting better. Ma'am, I think you're experiencing an anxiety attack, not a heart attack. She's still crying. Ask if she's stressed. She replied, saying she's a law student and it's finals week. I tell her I'm sure she's going to do fine. Tell her that the worst case scenario is just getting bad grades and even those can be easily fixed. You know, grades don't define you, blah blah blah. She's fine now. Breathing is normal. She apologizes and tells me to cancel the ambulances. She thanks me for comforting her. My face when anxiety attacks are commonly mistaken for heart attacks. I really do feel bad for these students. School getting in the way of their mental health. 911, what's your emergency? There's someone in my house. Sounded like an old man. Worn out. Tired. Have you seen them? What led you to believe that? Things keep moving on their own. What do you mean? Things don't stay in place. Could you give me an example? I leave a glass of water on the counter and I, I come back and find it broken on the floor. His voice made me uneasy. I think the mirror is doing it. Oh? Yeah, I've heard it knocking before. Knocking? Yeah, someone knocking from inside the mirror, but I've never let them in. I sent out an officer to check on him. Told me about how sneaky the mirrors could be until the officer found him. I didn't sleep well that night. 12 a.m. on a Saturday night. Woman. Mid-twenties. Panicking. Car crash. Her husband was the driver. Apparently, he wasn't responding. Surprised, a serious car crash had happened with only one call coming our way. Usually, with car crashes, we get several. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Severe trauma to the head. There was heavy bleeding and she was screaming. Made her breathe a bit before having her follow instructions. I told her to check on his breathing. He was breathing, but it was faint. I told her to stop moving his head. The guy probably had severe neck trauma, and I made her press her scarf on his wound. All while she was murmuring, He's dying. Oh 
my god, he's dying. He's dying. Oh my god, please don't die. Oh my god, please. Ambulance would take a while. They were in a very isolated area. Asked her if her phone had a flashlight. Made her put direct light onto his pupils. They didn't dilate. She asked me what that meant, but I didn't have the heart to tell her. She kept repeating over and over again how they were only married for a month. She suddenly broke out laughing, saying this must be a sick joke. I had to tell her it wasn't and that she should keep pressure on the wound. She started telling me about how she would have never seen this coming, but she thought that this shit only happens to other people. I literally heard this woman spiral into insanity. It was really hard to keep my voice passive, B. Hey guys, it's Doverbrook here, and I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, this was obviously a continuation of the first thread. I believe there were three threads posted in total. I did the two in this one and then the one in the first video. If there are any more that you guys know of or have, please feel free to link them in the comments or send them to me on Discord or Steam. I would love to read them because these 911 adventures were really cool to me. And honestly, I would be willing to bet that most of these are real. Maybe a little over exaggerated for entertainment value, but most of these seem pretty plausible. And even if they weren't real from this specific anon themselves, you know at least these scenarios had to have occurred at least at some point in uh, some 911 operator's life It's just kind of a cool look inside the job and to see what's going on And there's a little bit of a feels aspect a little bit of a funny aspect just kind of all around good entertainment And I really liked doing both of these videos So if you did like the video, I'm gonna be a little a little bit of a sellout youtuber Go ahead and smash that like button guys and remember to subscribe uh, There are, I, I've noticed on my videos They do get a lot of views and a lot more views than my sub base So just a friendly reminder if you do enjoy my content and you watch it frequently like it pops up in your recommended feed and you consistently watch it just go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you guys get you know my videos when they come out i do videos every saturday and wednesday it's a long video on saturdays and a shorter ish video on wednesdays next videos coming up are going to be damaged good blind mute lollies and a non-epic adventure i butchered all the s's on those hold on damaged goods blind mute lolly and a non's epic adventure there you go so those three videos i'm looking forward to those they're going to be super good super long videos and again i hope you guys enjoy my name is uh, Doverbro, and that's it for this video, guys. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.